Um, I've just been listening to some of your other stuff, Searing Enigma, uh, oh. and the stuff that's leading up to this album you've got. Um, yeah, it's just sounding pretty awesome. <laughs> well, I'm happy to hear that, man. Um, so I think we'll just dive straight in. We're already recording. Might as well keep going. Sure. Going. Yep. Um, awesome. So you you go by an artist known as Sodia. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. That is my other project. Yes. And you've got this project called Bleakness of Eris. Correct. Yes. So you've got a, you've got you're quite busy. It seems you've got a few things going on. So would you be able to oh, give yeah. us a bit of background about your project? Sure. Um, let's start with the bleakness of Eris. So uh, I created this project in 2014. So it's been almost a decade. Uh, but back then we were named Corrosion. So we started off as kind of like a two band kind of project. So it was me, uh, my pseudonym goes as Spaceman. And we had the other guy who I would refer as Dragon Slayer. I know <laughs> she, she's, named, she's named for a project, but that's... It'd be okay if they were all like maybe space themed names. Yeah. But you've got Spaceman, Dragon Slayer. They're, they're like yeah. <laughs> In his defense, he chose it. So I was like, yeah, let's go with it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. But we, we created the project and then we released uh, two demos and then um, one full album, which is actually this album. See, there is a little bit of a backstory here because, um, uh, how do I start with this? We, we weren't exactly happy with how the David album turned out. Right. So like we released it and then like two, we released it back in 2019. Yeah. And then like maybe two months later, we just weren't happy with it. I mean, the production was great. It's just the, transi the transitions kind of sucked. Right. Okay. So it's like yeah. one part and then suddenly another part. Yeah. Right. I mean, the drums are horrible. <laughs> and not in terms of like production it's just they don't have a lot of variations to them mm. so and that's you've, you've got to consider yeah. drums back in 2019 yeah not as good as 2024 drums <laughs> absolutely man i mean i used um i think we used the oldest easy drummer program and <laughs> i love that one <laughs> yeah fellow logic I mean... pro kind of person are you <laughs> Well, actually, I use GarageBand, and I still use okay. GarageBand, by the way. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I mean, I've been using it as long as I can remember, but I've been trying to get into more Studio One as of late, but, you know, I'm still learning. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, so, uh, so you yeah. scrapped the album, then? Well, we did release it, and then we had plans for a second album. And I still remember it because me and the other guy, we were like, you know, talking about, okay, how do we want this album to be? Because after we released what would be known as The Rotten Galaxy, or mm -hmm. that was our debut album. And uh, me and the guy, we talked about it and was like, you know, I, I feel like this project isn't going anywhere, man. So how do we do it? I was like, fuck it. Let's just down tune our instrument as low as possible, <laughs> making them as without making them as inaudible as possible. Yeah. And then we just made, you know, that uh, second demo. And then and then we just uh, we just put uh, corrosion on hiatus. Hiatus. Right. So this was during the pandemic started. Yeah. And during that time, we also started to you know write other things as well i mean he he did um you know he did uh, uh an ep called i i don't know what it's called i think it's called shorelines of rusco i think right and um, and then me um i was like i was going nowhere with this it's just damn jungle i'm just not gonna think about it 
and that's how I created sodia. Right. Because with corrosion or blatance of errors, we were just going full ham on death metal, one twenty-four beats per minute. <laughs> and then and then with this, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna experiment with other musical genres as much as I can. Yeah. So and I mean so, for a yeah. lot of people, the pandemic was a time to kind of experiment, make things and we all had time, didn't we? Um, I know, right? So Sodia came out of that. Um, and it's it, yeah. Sodia is kind of more, at least from what I've heard, it, it leans to more kind of grunge rock kind of roots, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. almost. I mean, I released, uh, like in our first album, it was more a little bit of a mix of everything. We yeah. had no yeah. like consistent genre. We had like... One song that was like indie rockish, and we had another track that was a little bit more on the metal side, but not exactly. It's a mix of everything, and yeah, I feel like when I listen back to that album, it doesn't hold up as nearly as much as I want it to be. Yeah, because I don't know, man. Us releasing an album, it just takes too much time. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm quite similar. I make something and I, and I release it probably too quickly instead of sitting on it for a while and then later on I'm like oh should I ever release that but yeah. I have that I have that same thing man. <laughs> yeah and then I've, I've started like recently I've removed some tidied up my Spotify a bit you know I, I just felt like I needed to um, and yeah. probably actually like no one's bothered <laughs> whatever's on, on my Spotify no one's bothered but to me I was bothered you know um, yeah. but do you did you find that having these other projects helped with bleakness of Eris. Absolutely, one hundred percent. If I hadn't, if I hadn't um, experimented with other genres to, you know, widen my horizons, not only as a guitarist but more so as a musician, mm. I would have not been here right now. I would have not, you know, even thought about uh, doing that. Yeah. And that's why it's important to go and find other things, but then, you know, come back to your bands and your collaboration projects when you can and it feels right. So that's good. Yeah, cool. exactly. Um, so if we could rewind the clock a bit further, what first got you into music? You know, why are you into the heaviest of death metal, but then also <laughs> garage rock, indie rock, whatever? Uh, <laughs> what was your inspiration growing up? my inspiration let's see here um well uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because um as a kid you did not even think about much in terms of music you just listen what you got like when i grew up i was listening to well your average britney spears um you, what was it called? S Club Seven. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> those, those like kids pop bands. Yeah, that that was me growing up. And then I heard <clears throat> there was like three albums that got me into like metal. First one was Ride the Lightning with Metallica, my absolute favorite. Okay. Yeah. Um, the second one is. This, these two other albums might shock you, but the first one was, uh, the second one was The Sickness by The Deserved. Okay, yeah. That's good. I, That's like a gateway metal band. I get it. <laughs> I mean, I, I still I still bang that album. It still slaps. Yeah, <laughs> it still I slaps. love Down With The Sickness or uh, Burn 2000, whatever that song is called, I forgot. Mm. And then the third one was Come Clarity by Flames. Oh, I don't know that. Okay. I love that album, man. Yeah. Okay, what Hendel says that album still holds up. <laughs> but bands but, like but... like Metallica, Iron Maiden, ACDC, yeah. those are the kind of like hard rock, heavy metal bands that would get you into, you know, further down the line and eventually yeah. Death metal. <laughs> exactly. Mm. So um, then, yeah. Sorry, go on, go on. But then things got you know a little heavier, and then you like heard. Know, bands like Bloodbath and s- stuff like those bands. Yeah. And you're like, what is this? I can't tell if I genuinely love it or if I want to love it. And then I love it. 
<laughs> that's it you keep listening until it becomes comfortable and then you enjoy yeah. it yeah um I... so the music that you typically create would you say most of the time it verges on things that are bleakness of Eris, or is it just a mixed bag um could you come again please um the music you typically make is it yeah usually death metal or is it a range of genres it's mostly death metal, yeah. Mm. yeah. But sometimes, as stated, other genres do like grunge whenever I feel like it. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And it's good that yes. you've got that that space to diversify. And uh, so dear, I've done two reactions, I think, for so dear. Yeah. So people, I'm going to link that in the description, and people can check that out as well if they want to see those reactions, and then go on to listen to some of your music. Um, yeah. Let's talk about uh, the song that I have reviewed. It's nine minutes long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very long. It's long, and there's nothing wrong with long songs, and I've listened to it. I'm not going to yeah. give too much away about my own personal thoughts about it, because you'll see that on the reaction. Uh, you can called... be as honest as you want, man. <laughs> I'm uh, all for I, it. I pride myself on being that, you know, so... It's fine, but it's called Sixth Ranger. Yep. There's a bit of an interesting background to it, which I, I go through in the video. Um, so I really want to know what inspired you to sort of create a two-part, nine-minute, almost almost like operatic epic in, in a death metal sense. <laughs> Glad you asked that, because I probably mentioned in the description when I send you the song, but... Mm. Um, I mentioned that somewhere um, there was like other projects that were like colliding when we took a hiatus. Well, yeah. one of those things was that I wanted to write a side story, which was like a four parter because I still remember like I had the maps, I had the script, I had all the layouts. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, this is going to sound like a ridiculous title, but I was originally going to name it The Himes. The Himes for Japanese is The Princesses. Right. So, okay. so what I wanted was, um, I wanted this to be like an epic because I'm a big, big Sailor Moon fan, as because I wanted it to be like an epic battle of good versus evil. Yeah. So, Six Ranger was actually going to be the last track, uh, last chapter. And in that, there was a character named Z who's going to join in on the game. Yeah. And then, and then like defeat the quote unquote evil bad guy. But uh, Psych Z betrays them and then she gets sent into the abyss. Yeah. Now, you you don't actually, as listeners, need to understand that <laughs> because no. there'll be plenty of people that don't get the the concept, I, myself no, included. No. I've never sort of delved into the world of Sailor Moon, but yeah. as it's death metal, I mean, you it could have been about what you had for dinner, and <laughs> I would have enjoyed it anyway. <laughs> you know, um, but it, I think it's great to have a concept when you're working on a project because it kind of grounds and directs you. It gives you a lyrical focus and a theme to yeah. work on. And it does kind of gauge where your music's going. And throughout this song, there's like mm -hmm. little pauses uh, to kind of relax. Well, I I do say a bit of a, a reveal in the reaction i do say that it's a place yeah. to rest you get like these piano things but it's like you're resting in maybe a haunted house or something because it's still uneasy that rest you know like there's <laughs> pia nice piano sections but they are still haunting and obviously put you on edge so it's nice to have those breaks in between before it comes pummeling back in again uh that's the whole idea yeah yeah and i think it does transition well because of that and you said that was something that you want you were trying to work on um, and didn't go so well on your last project. So, Because, like I said before, my thought process was 
I mean, who wants to listen to 50, 50 minutes of technical wankery bullshit? Absolute, <laughs> absolutely no one. That was my thought process back in like late 2019. That was, but, um, you know, I think differently now. Yeah. And it is easy in that genre to get into uh, the technical, hyper-technical side of things and, and then become mainly like focused towards guitarists. And in the meta world, that is a problem sometimes, isn't it? That yeah. you're playing for other guitarists to listen to you. Um, whereas there's a bit more thought into the structure and how things are moving forward in the song rather than look at what I can do, which exactly. Is like, yeah. That is actually one of the reasons why I want to avoid to mm. you know define myself as a typical metal guitarist. Because that's, I mean, my primary instrument is playing guitar. I love playing guitar. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Same. Um, <laughs> however, um, I want to think more of myself as someone who wants to create music for people. Just yeah. all around the world, they can relate to, they can listen to it and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that I'm... It's definitely important to consider the listener. It's something I find I keep saying to a lot of these independent artists, especially guitar-based bands, is yeah. uh, that the listener isn't going to know how it felt to play the guitar or what it felt like to record it together or anything. They're just going to hear the end result. And if there aren't those small things in a song that make it interesting, the transitions, the breaks, mm -hmm. bringing it back in, and it's like a wall of sound throughout, the listener's not going to be interested in that because they don't get the feeling of how it was made. They just hear the end result. And yeah, I, I always look for that in music. I look for the small details of how things have been put together. And it was, it was nine minutes, but it wasn't nine minutes of me going, Oh, this is never ending full on <laughs> double bass drum blast beats <laughs> continuously. It wasn't, you know, it was yeah. broken up, it was sectioned and it worked. And, you know, that's what you need in, in songs really. That's something what I'm trying to learn more, actually, you know, to keep those transitions entertained. Yeah. And, it and I think that's easy to do. I, yeah. I, I think that's what, you know, matters the most in terms of writing songs. Yeah. Is that's... important transitions, because if you don't have that, what's the point? Exactly. Yeah. So um, you've talked a bit about the background for the song and kind of the album. Um, yes. <clears throat> who would who would be interested in this album, and or if, even in just that song? And who is it for? Who are you trying to do it for? Which one are we talking about then? Again, are we talking about? Well, we could talk about um, Sit Ranger, or we could talk about the whole upcoming album. Um, who's it for? Like you choose, basically. <laughs> I mean, it's for. It's for death metal musicians, but it can be forever. Yeah. Even if you are not a fan of it. Yeah, I, I, I'd agree. Um, and if you think recently, I mean, death metal has kind of had a sort of mainstream rise in the past years with bands such as, I hate to say, Lorna Shaw, who's probably hate, hated in the uh, I actually, circles, but... believe it or not, I have been listening to them as of late. Hmm. I actually do enjoy To The Hellfire. Yeah. That song blows my mind. <laughs> and I'd be, lying, I'd be lying if I said some of this transitioning kind of came from them. <laughs> well, if it's working from them, then why not take something from them? You know, that's what artists do. They, they're they inspired exactly. by different things. So if we, we're looking at what's working, let's use it. Yeah. Um, so... Is there a name for this upcoming album? Have you said it yet? I don't think I've, unless I missed it. Well, I mean, I could reveal to you, um, you know, like, I'm oh. just say, it's, it's, it's called The Rotten Galaxy, but it's a new version. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> reveal here for the first time. I like that. I, was, I always love yeah. to get things that are first time reveal. So awesome. And what's your favorite <laughs> song so far from... Uh, this upcoming project? Uh, it has to be the title track, probably. Okay. And is is that 
on YouTube now. I was just listening to Searing Enigma. Um, but... No, it's not. Uh, it's coming out on, let me see here. It's coming out on April 24th. Okay. Yes, April 24th. And I am about to release a teaser Ooh. for the song soon. Fantastic. Well, if you send that to me, I'll definitely link the the teaser down below and upon this song release the album release everything just let me know i'll pop it in the video and then anyone listening can go and check that out too absolutely fantastic so if you could give people a reason to listen to your music what would you say what makes it unique from others <laughs> well <laughs> let me see here should i start with soda or should i start with speaking to various <laughs> up, to, up to you up to you i mean okay, is this start... a focus on bleakness of eris or is this a focus on sodia or is this both it could be both it could be both okay, let's, let's go... make it both <laughs> okay let's go and start with sodia then uh okay. for sodia um if you love alice in early like alice in chains uh dirt sound if you love you know that Early raw Nirvana sound. I'm not talking about Nevermind. I'm talking about you know, things like Bleach, uh, even the like the early Fickle Matter era. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you love that, if you um, you know are having problems with your life, you just want to vent it out. Go listen to our songs, tracks. Like ugly, for example. Yeah. Or man, of many faces. <laughs> I I did like a uh, ugly. I I took a shine to that one. I think. Yeah. I. I... Man of many faces was nice. It did have that kind of slow pace to it, and I could see like why that would be loved. But yeah, I can see. I mean, I can see where you're coming from because sometimes it does slow things down a little too much. I mean, it depends, really, isn't it? Like, if you've got, like, I always think, like, as someone who's a, a reactor, like, yeah. you listen to something slower, it's fine, isn't it? But it's, it's, reactions have to feel like they need to be upbeat and pace, pacey and stuff like that at times, isn't it? But in the I context of, like, mean. a whole project, like, a slowed down song is is absolutely fine. But, yes, if you've got problems with your life, I think, so, so, Sojia, is it Sojia? I, you so, pronounce yeah. it. So dear, you pronounce it slightly differently to me. Um, yeah, that's the I'm, place I'm to go Swedish. for that, though. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so what about Bleakness of Eris then? Uh, Bleakness of Eris, yes. If you love early 90s death metal bands like Gorgods, uh, Malevolent Creation, and even some of the modern ones like Defeated Sanity, then go check out Bleakness of Eris. We play brutal death metal. Old school rule of death metal, but with a modern <laughs> twist to it. That sounds yeah. Right. I think I think that's the most accurate description for this project. Yeah, and it definitely does have a modern twist to it in its approach and its artwork. Um, yeah, it just um, it just is, and its pacing. Um, I've got one last question for you, and it's one I ask everyone I interview: is how Go do you ahead. feel? How do you feel the internet has impacted your approach to being an artist? This. I have to think about this one for a second. <laughs> it's not an easy question. <laughs> it's not. And that's why I like asking it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how has internet been? Well. Has it made it easier for you? Do you feel it's harder for you? Well, I could say it's, I mean, it's a little bit of both, actually. Mm. More on the easier way, because um, I could probably say, like, maybe back in the day, when, um, <clears throat> let's see, yeah, this was not an easy, easy question. <laughs> It's, it's hard to compare to maybe the past, but in some ways it's easier because you can get your music out there oh, pretty yeah, much instantly, absolutely. can't you? But then there's a lot of people doing that. It does make oh. it harder. But if you're not no. a live band, then the internet is the perfect kind of thing to be, isn't it? If it if absolutely. You... So like, I... 
I, I, guess just... I don't play live, for example, and I think the internet's brilliant because I can release my music. Absolutely. Mm. I think now that you mention it, I, I think that um, it is a little much easier because, you know, back then, if you wrote music, you had to like, you had to write, you had to produce, it cost a lot of money. Yep. You had to thought of it. And then you, perform it. <laughs> yep, you and you need you need to have a record label that could approve of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And all of these other tedious things that you don't even want to think about. As opposed to now, like you said, we I mean I, I release my music through a muse. Yeah. Which yeah. I think is relatively easy. I mean, all you need to do is like convert your song into like a WAV file. Yeah. Put it on uh, a muse, um, put the picture so they can uh, album cover so they can approve it, and then you can just wait. Yep. That's it. It's yeah. it's so easy these days. It's great. Um, so I I did say the last question, but I got one more. Um yeah. I know Bleakless of Eris is working towards this new album. Um I think you mentioned something about Sodja having a new project or you've been working on something for that am i wrong am i right well you are wrong there no sorry excuse me <laughs> you are right actually because we are i've been going back and forth to not only release um the Beatles of Ares album but also a new Sodia ep and those two tracks man of many faces and ugly are nice it's probably also going to be the darkest. Like lyrically. Lyrically. And okay. yeah, mostly lyrically, yeah. Hmm. Musically, depends. Yeah. Does it stick to um, a similar sound style or does it jump around like in previous projects? I know you mentioned that you want you weren't happy with previous projects jumping around. Um, I think I'm going to just stick to grunge because if I, that that's kind of the problem mm. that I sometimes have as a songwriter, that sometimes when you widen your horizons too much, they collide. Yeah. And you just, I mean, take for example, in our first, um, soda album, there's like a track there called what was it called again was it surfing the east line where it was more like a the ventures kind of type of sound right and that's almost like i don't know i feel i felt like that was colliding a bit too much yeah sometimes you need consistency right so you're trying to ground it a bit more in a, in a similar sound consistency Ex yeah yeah, yeah. Pretty amazing much. well i thoroughly enjoyed having this talk with you I think it's been really Me nice. Me too, man. Um, all the links are down below, and you can go and check out my reaction to Sick Ranger. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been lovely to speak to you. Have a lovely you too, rest man. Of your life. Take care. Happy Easter, by the way. Oh yeah, happy Easter. <laughs> Take Hope care. Hope you have a great one, man. It was nice talking to you. It really was. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Have a good one. Bye, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, join the members club. You get like perks and stuff, and uh, it's fun. So yeah, and go on my channel and click on the member bit or the join page or something. It doesn't work on iPhone for some reason. I don't know. Bye.